Hey guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Mesa here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we are talking about Monstrous Beauty by Elizabeth Fama. So you guys should probably leave pretty soon. If you don't want to be spoiled, I will go over just a little bit of this. I've been doing book talks for a lot of the books, not all of the books, but a lot of the books that I have read for for Mermaid Marathon because I just want to like keep the the vibes going and a lot of these I am rereading for the second or third time so I have very clear, somewhat clear, <laughs> concise thoughts about them. Okay, I've already filmed this video once and my thoughts were all jumbled and it was the first book talk that I filmed and now it is not because that one just did not work out so I am refilming it today to talk about it because I read this two years ago. I was iffy about it because this is to date the darkest mermaid book I have ever read. It is still a young adult book but it is dark. It is insanely insanely dark. Everyone's saying that like To Kill a Kingdom is a Dark Little Mermaid retelling. It has nothing on Monstrous Beauty. Like this one does have some sexual assault um, and violence in it. So keep that in mind for trigger warnings because there can be some really graphic things in here. There's a lot of very graphic violent things that happen. Um, that being said, uh, the first time that I read it, it just, I wasn't prepared for how dark it was and I was not prepared for it to go certain places that it did. So I, it just, I hadn't really read any books like that and it just wasn't what I was wanting at the time. So I kind of decided that I didn't like it, but it kind of always stayed with me and I kind of always thought about it and remembered things from it. So this Mermaid Marathon, I wanted to give it a reread slash re-listen because of those reasons. So... Um, that being said, this time around, oh my god, this book is brilliant. Elizabeth Fama is just a genius. This is the first book that I reread in June and I did it via audiobook and it was excellent. And I will list the uh, narrator down below if you guys want to learn more about that. I am going to be reusing this outfit because I re-listened to a lot of um, mermaid audiobooks recently. So just going to keep that in mind. But um, anyway, we're going to get right into it. So if you guys haven't read Monstrous Beauty, then head on out now. Because I don't want to spoil you because the mystery part of this is the best part. Bye! Mystery in this had me still confused in a good way while listening to it because I couldn't remember everything because it's so well written that the mystery is just like all tied in together and you have to just be like fully in the world. So it's told from those two different perspectives which is so so cool. I loved learning about Hester that her family had this weird curse and then all the women die and then I loved seeing her in like that old town that she worked at in her like old-timey uniform. We had something like that in Kansas City where I am from. It was like called Old Town Days or something and I used to love to go there as a kid so I could fully picture like Hester in her little uniform and like talking in her little like old accent. <laughs> um, I really liked Sarinka and oh my gosh okay so the scene with Sarinka and Olaf like after Ezra's like kind of half drowning in the water and Olaf's like trying to kill her and then he rapes her. <laughs> oh my god I just I remember that part like just traumatizing me and it's not even like a super like long descriptive scene or anything like that it's just the fact that it happened it blew my mind and then I completely forgot that she didn't realize that she was gonna get pregnant which is the way to become human so she thinks she still needs to become human so she rips his chest open and eats his lungs I completely forgot about that and the narrator was like and she rips his chest open and ate his lungs with a fierce vengeance or whatever it was and I was like oh my god the narrator for this one was so good during those like high action high intense gory scenes she was just so on top of everything it was traumatizing oh my god oh my gosh it was it was crazy it was I just couldn't think about anything else while I was listening to this I think I listened to it in like two days um and I just I don't know I was really like happy to be like joining in again I completely forgot that we don't really know that the Scottish pastor and the little girl are ghosts like I I keep wanting to spoil things and tell people there are ghosts in this book but you're not supposed to know that and the Ezra is like a ghost see when I read it the first time when I read it the first time I couldn't remember if Ezra was a ghost or if he was like immortal now like because you don't really know what's what's happening. Oh so I knew that like he couldn't leave the beach and I couldn't remember why and I really liked 
Peter, um, Hester's friend Peter. Oh my gosh, he's so sweet and he's so nice and he has no idea what's happening. Um, and then Hester, the way that she has to steal Ezra's diary and I forgot that they he drew all those pictures of Sarinka and then she found a way to hide them so that they could keep them for you know their sake because they were just like so beautiful and then the Hester could see them you know as she turned the pages and so she wanted to steal the diary which was so awesome um and then the way that Eleanor Olaf's wife has Sarinka's baby like I forgot that Sarinka gave the baby up like immediately and that she expected like her sisters to just grab the baby and take it to be a mermaid I guess I don't know and that Eleanor winds up with the baby and then she doesn't know <sighs> And then Eleanor thinks she's this demon because she killed her husband, which she did kill her husband. She just does not understand why. And the whole scene where she like tries to drown her and then the pastor's involved and then, oh my God, it's so sad. And Ezra, Ezra doesn't know and they've tricked them all and it's just really sad. It's just like a sad, sad scene. <laughs> um, and so graphic. Oh my gosh, with Lenny and the little girl and she's got the baby and then Lenny's head cracks open. <sighs> this is why I like stayed up at nights thinking about this book because it's like traumatizing. I don't know. I I remember like not really wanting Hester to be with Ezra because I didn't understand what was happening and I I didn't like agree with it. So I was like, I don't think you really want to be with him if he's a ghost and if he's immortal. That's kind of weird too. And I also forgot. I basically forgot everything. Let's be honest. <laughs> that the souls were all connected. I had to like re-listen to this like twice to get everything figured out. So Sarenka's soul goes into the baby and then someone else dies so she sacrifices it and so then all the moms wind up. I forgot that the moms in Hester's family, I thought that they were all the women I guess. I thought they were all dying after they had the baby. They weren't. They were giving their life up to save the baby because the baby was dying. I forgot that that's what was happening and so that was just such a cool review, reveal in the way that she did it and the way that she revealed it all was it was just it's so brilliantly written and tied together and well thought out. Um, I listened to a small interview that Elizabeth Fama did at the end of the audiobook and she talked about how like she would stop writing to look up things to be historically accurate when it even came from like how the men like tied their pants or buttoned their shirts and then how she talked about how the Scottish pastor or priest or whatever it was he's her favorite character because he was one of the only ones that would like she could like hear in her head and write the lines versus her like coming up with them on her own which a lot of authors talk about how their characters kind of come alive by themselves and write their own stories um because I just love the Scottish pastor and I couldn't remember the second time around if he was like a good guy or not um I always kept waiting for him to kind of like turn around and be evil and then I can't believe that I forgot once again that Eleanor or I forgot I forgot in general that Eleanor is alive too like I knew that she died with them I forgot that she was a ghost and that she's just been like kind of hiding out waiting for Sarinka slash Hester also forgot about how long we are in the sea world with the evil sea witch like there is a hefty portion of this book that's in that part where Hester is trying to um, get out of the world because she's got that sea witch has her like under her control. Like you would enjoy this book even if you don't like mermaids and sirens except for maybe that part because you're you're in that underwater sea witchy thing for so long but I also liked Elizabeth Fama talked about that and how the sea witch has like a background story that she has in her head for like why she's so evil because she doesn't like just having evil characters she likes them to have a reason. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, I forgot that Hester was like underwater with her for like such a long period and like how she escaped and then the sisters helped her and she had to grab the flask. Ugh. So then we go and we've got to like unpin the spirits and uh, basically they have to relive their deaths in front of her. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's so horrible and Hester has to watch Ezra die again and she loves him so much and it's so sad. Oh my gosh. And, and she, it would be so easy for her not to do that and just to keep him around for longer. But she decides to do it anyway. But you, we all know that she's probably going to wind up with Peter, right? Because Peter's adorable and I love him so much. 
and he's just so sweet and he's such a good friend to her and I love guy characters like that that are just like the best friend. <laughs> um, my husband's like really really sweet so I love reading about like really sweet male characters because it's not very common. And it's not that Ezra's not sweet but he's got that like broody thing kind of going on and you know from being immortal for like a bajillion years. I just think that the way this was written and everything way the way that everything is tied together and um, interwoven with the two different um, time periods and perspectives and all of that stuff is just so awesome and so much fun to read about. The audiobook person, like I said, was so good at doing both time periods and even like the Scottish accent and all that stuff. She was just awesome. So if you guys have read this one but haven't listened to it, listen to it because it's so good and it's so fun to listen to even if you've read it before. I, I really like rereading that way. It's just a new way to experience it. If you have a good audiobook narrator, then it's really fun. So hopefully I've covered all the topics that I wanted to talk about and I wasn't just rambling or giving you the rundown of the book basically by itself. <laughs> if you guys have any more thoughts on Monster Speedy, you can send me a private message on Instagram and I'd be happy to talk about it with you. Please don't put anything in the comments. I don't want to spoil anybody that isn't aware that this is like a spoilery video. And yeah, that's all for this book talk. I'll see you guys next time on the bright side. Bye!